Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering one of DreamWorks' earlier films, Joseph, King of Dream. Now this biblical animated movie tells the life of Joseph, an Old Testament figure who's been given prophetic dreams, is sold into slave in Egypt, and where people then learn of his gifts from God. Mm-hmm. And we saw this one actually twice, but we right. watched it recently on Netflix. And we thought we'd watch it in honor, of course, uh, the Passover... And the Easter celebrations that are coming up in April, which is when you're listening to this podcast. Right. We wanted to do it last year, but we forgot. That was pretty much it. Yeah. That was, that was pretty much it. But glad we watched it again because it's a really great film. It's a really great film. And I kind of thought that uh, Dreamers would do more movies like this. And it looks like they only stopped at two. They did mm -hmm. this, and they did Prince of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, that's not the direction they wanted to go to. I thought they were going to start doing, like, most of these uh, biblical tales in the Bible and, and do it in their own way, but it seems like they stopped after it's two. It's possible it wasn't as profitable for them as the secular things they were doing, which mm -hmm. is possible because you have other companies that have made it um, their focus and their niche. And they probably do it better. Mm. Now, we know Joseph King of Dreams was pretty straightforward and it was about an hour. And then, um, what was the other movie they did? Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt was longer and more of a musical. Yeah, so, and more of an epic and right. stuff. So yeah. I don't think they got a handle on it as well as they have on other genres they cover. But personally, I like Joseph King of Dreams. It was straightforward. It was rooted in the story that appears in the Old Testament and they didn't take it didn't seem like they took any um liberties thank you that's what I was looking for liberty and justice for all they didn't take any liberties on changing the story and it was straightforward the cast voice acting cast was great and the animation was great mm -hmm. so I really really liked this Telling or retelling, I should say, of the story. Yeah, telling of the story because it wasn't a retelling. Right. And, and like you said, it's so straightforward. And that's probably why the runtime is vastly different from Prince of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they even have songs in here. But unlike some other movies, it's not every five minutes. Right. It's like after an event happens, there's a song, and it's kind of short. And then they move on to the next thing and keep going with the story. Exactly. Prince of Egypt is more like an epic retelling more like a musical something like almost disney would make where they would add their own interpretations their own musical segments try to make it a, a grand theatrical experience and it did work because it's considered one of the best dreamworks movies or best biblical based movies ever made mm -hmm. and joseph is kind of in the background because it's it just sticks to the story it doesn't they don't add their own niche to it other or than maybe... Right. right. The only thing they probably add is they gave the brothers more of a personality besides of what's told in the uh, story of Joseph. Right. And one day we will do... The Prince of Egypt, yeah. Yes, we will do that one. But for now, we're going to give you this. Um, is, as we mentioned, it sticks to the biblical story. Joseph was born um, of a different mother than his brothers. And his mom was Rachel. And he and his brother Benjamin were her two children. And she had prayed for many years to be able to have children. Her sister Leah had um, all the other brothers. And all together they uh, composed the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. They uh, were much older. And they were shepherds and farmers and so forth. And mm -hmm. hunters and so forth. And Joseph was seen as the least one because he was the youngest. And two, because he wasn't built the way they were or had the same personalities, mm -hmm. God was giving him uh, prophetic dreams. And he had a different path for him. And he told them of the dreams he was having. Mm -hmm. Instead of keeping them to himself, he would tell them. The dad treated him like a favorite because, again, he was the old, he was the youngest, forgive me. And because Rachel wasn't able to have children all the times that Leah was having them. Mm -hmm. So for him, Joseph was a special child. And I don't think he was special in the sense of, he's my favorite and he's better than all of you. It was, oh, this wife finally had a child for me. And now I have a son from her as well. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't taken that way by his brothers. It was taken that way as you think you're better than us. You're above us. You think we're going to serve you. And instead of loving him, 
they were jealous of him. Right, the entire time, which was led to him being sold, is that they were really this envious towards him. And they originally, they wanted to kill him. Mm-hmm. And then I think Reuben is the one who didn't want to kill right. him. Right. Now that part is kind of, that part is kind of left out in here, maybe because uh, it's for kids, so they kind of just skip straight to them selling him. Like, they tricked him into uh, falling into this giant pit, and when they get him out, they sell him into Egypt. So they might have just, you know, skipped over that slide, and maybe they're kind of mm-hmm. worried for little kids being scared, because Egypt didn't really stray away from that. I mean, they were really into all the dark parts of it, which were part of the story. So here, I think they decided, we'll just slightly skip over that, which didn't affect it, but I can understand them wanting to, you know, avoid, you know, scaring little kids. Mm-hmm. And as it goes on, like I said, as it continues on with the um, story, and you see Joseph in Egypt, uh, you can you can tell that already that you know things are being planned for him. It looks it always looks like you know for the for the movie that it's getting worse, but things always get better. And his attitude is one of the things that really stands out not only in the biblical story, but in this movie, he keeps being positive. He keeps knowing that. Things are going to turn out well for him despite how it's looking. He keeps being honest. He mm-hmm. keeps working hard. And he keeps serving the God that he worships. Yeah. And over the course of time, I mean, this is years. Mm-hmm. The movie makes it seem like it's short. But this takes place over many years. Why? Where he's thrown into prison. He's accused of something he didn't do by Potiphar's wife. Potiphar ends up finding out that his wife lied. But it, it's kind of evident in the story and in the movie that he really knew she wasn't telling the truth Mm -hmm. but because she was his wife and he was worried about appearances uh to his subjects and those who serve right he put him in prison right because you could tell he regretted that right because when they had later when joseph was released it was clear that he knew that you know she was not telling the truth so and the the, tree the beautiful tree yeah and him uh grooming it and caring for it and building the bricks around it and it was like an homage to his faith and in him knowing that things will work out and you saw him get older i like how they depicted that he was older Mm -hmm. and you know the facial hair growing he was bigger and taller and you saw the progression of him maturing not only physically Mm -hmm. but also mentally and spiritually i do like the way the movie depicted that right and the songs were actually very well done and they felt natural to the story. Like I said, they weren't just songs thrown in to be a Disney musical or something. Right. They were very well done. Mm-hmm. Great singers for all of them. Uh, that wasn't thrown in every five minutes. They were put in during major parts of the story when they needed to show a passage of time. And they were very, they felt very heartfelt mm-hmm. when you listen to the lyrics. They also mm-hmm. weren't, um, they didn't just feel like, like I said, like, Thrown in flipping, musicals, right, yeah. They, they didn't feel like, oh, this doesn't fit. You just threw this in so you could have a song and be like Disney. No, they were setting the mood and the tone of the film still all throughout it. And it never flip flop into being a slapstick comedy mm-hmm. or being a horror or going too far in any direction. It just stays telling the story and you're engrossed in it the entire time and not feeling like, well, this didn't happen or this doesn't feel right or so forth, especially when it gets towards the end of the film. Right, and I did want to bring that up because they show the power of forgiveness. They show staying focused on your goals and they show just having love regardless of what happens around you. Mm-hmm. Joseph was an example of this. You know, He was really happy to see his brothers regardless of what happened. He still loved them. Mm-hmm. He wanted them to be well. He didn't want them to die in the famine. He still was, you know, wanting to see his mother and father, which his mother he didn't get to see again. And then he learned he had a younger brother, Benjamin, which really made him happy because he had a brother uh, from the same mother, Mm -hmm. as well as his other brothers from Leah. And the joy that he had in seeing them all again and telling them, you know, bring the entire family and bring the tribe bring everyone here you'll be cared for Mm -hmm. and this was able to happen because he was obedient and listened to um the prophetic dreams and the direction he was given Mm -hmm. by um the pharaoh 
listening to him as well and stocking up for seven years during the seven years of plenty mm -hmm. and taking one fifth of what was there so that they could give it to the people during the famine. That is just wonderful because, you know, unfortunately, and, uh, it seems that that one fifth wouldn't have been kept to give the others would have been kept for themselves. Mm -hmm. But again, there's a lesson in this story. Yes, we save and we do this, but when we have plenty, we give to others. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful lesson of strength, strength of character, again, love, mm -hmm. forgiveness. It's just a beautiful story. If you look at it just as a story, it's a beautiful story with a lot of moral and great lessons. If you look at it as um, a biblical story, it not only gives those things, but shows you uh, the life of a man who started off low, who started off as the least in his family, who became the greatest in his family through his obedience to listening to um, the Word of God. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. And we have to mention the voice cast. Yes. I thought Ben Affleck was perfect as Joseph. Mm -hmm. Had our favorite Mark Hamill. Um, he had Judith Light, which is was one of um, our Nana's favorite actresses. Uh, yeah, Jodie Benson from The Little Mermaid. Richard McConaughey. Uh, David Campbell. Richard McConaughey was... Um, Ben Ten, uh, oh, shoot, what, what what was he doing? I know he he wasn't animal. That was Dwight no, Schultz. So right. He he was on there doing a voice. He somewhere. was the professor. Who, oh, Professor Paradox. Yes, Professor Paradox. And we had Homer, then Castellano, mm -hmm, and uh, Renee Bourgeois. Yes. So it was a great cast, and I think it was a great venture. And I'm really truly grateful that DreamWorks made it because it's a movie that people of all ages can enjoy. It can be watched at any time during the year. And I think it's a testament to them really wanting to create a company that provides entertainment for all. Right. So this is just a great example of the ability of DreamWorks to be flexible mm -hmm. and to try a hand at everything, which is great. I mean, you know, it, they found it didn't work well for them and they moved to something else, but they tried. Mm -hmm. And they produced not one but two movies in this genre that people all over the world can enjoy. Right. So if you... Seen Joseph, yeah, definitely let us know what you thought of it in the comments. And if you have other movies of the same genre that you would like us to watch and review, let us know that in the pod in the in the comments below and we'll do a podcast for you. <laughs> right. And be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on Paws Podcast. Yes, so we want to wish you and your families, as well as our Paws family and Rascal family, uh wonderful Passover, wonderful Easter. And may you and your family be happy and healthy and whole and enjoy uh, your time spent with each other filled with a day of love. Right. Well, days of love in the yes. case of Passover. Yes. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. And the water sitting, flashing lights. Trying to walk around, man, who the hell are you? What you want to do? My man, it's on you. Man, it's on you. And in my dreams. She was my queen. In the mountaintops, rivers, and streams. Plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket. People in the back, for the people in the front, for the people on the side, for the people on the front, for the people in the middle, or the alley, one up, and everybody who.